Morning everybody, how are you going? Um, beautiful day today. Um, first started up and I'm going to be doing some wet area ceilings. Now this is a much uh, more premium job than what the uh, budget builders uh, pay for. So um, I'm going to show you how I go about doing the wet area ceilings. Now that's the bathrooms, uh, ensuite, um, toilet, uh, you know those sort of areas there, powder room. Um, yeah, anything that moisture and water steam can reach, basically. Uh, I would probably normally do the laundry as well, but in this case here, the laundry ceilings aren't ready for me. They've still got to have some uh, corners put on. Uh, I'm going to show you what paint I'm going to be using. Now, this is the paint that we're going to be using for the wet area ceilings. It resists mold and bacteria, which may trigger asthma and allergies. Uh, so basically it's a wash and wear low sheen, but it's a anti back um, plus, you know, whatever that means, but it's uh, it's a different paint to what I'm going to be using on the walls. Not that I couldn't be using the other paint on the walls, so this is what I would normally be using on the walls. This is what I will be using on the walls. Um, I've mainly changed to this one here for the ceilings is so that I don't get confused. Um, so this can be my ceiling paints for in my wet areas for the next uh, couple of jobs for example And this is my normal ceiling flat here So if we were to just do normal ceiling flats, that's the one we'd be using But we're using this one here. It's um, over twice the price But um, it's going to be really really nice. So I'll show you what I'm going to do um now remember they've all been undercoated, they've been rolled, these ceilings in the wet areas, they've been rolled with an undercoat and sprayed the corners with an undercoat. Now I'll show you what we've got. We've got, um, this is the ensuite. I've just sanded these ceilings. So we have a toilet in here. So that one there has been rolled with the undercoat, the wall undercoat, and sprayed to the corners with the this undercoat here. Okay, so that's what's happened there. This one here also is another ceiling that has to be done. I'm going to be covering up all this um, wet seal here and this bench, of course, which has just been put in on Friday. All these doors are undercoated. Um, so this is the laundry. Normally I'd probably do this laundry as well while I've got it out, but they've got overhead cupboards and the bulkheads need to be done. So this will be done in the normal ceiling flat. It's no need to do it in the um, wash and wear. And we've got another one here. This is the main bathroom. So this is like the powder room or the vanity. Um, so we're going to be doing that. Now this could steam up, you know, hot day, hot you know, a cold day, uh, hot water, so it could steam up. So you're going to be doing this because this is all sort of part of this wet area here. There's a toilet here, and the reason we might want to do the toilet in that wash and wear low sheen is because any smells that could be absorbed into this ceiling flat if it was um, just your normal flat ceiling paint. So that's why I do the toilets if possible. And obviously this is the bathroom. Uh, lots of steam happening here. So we're going to be doing this. Now there's actually two coats got to go on here. Uh, so there will be three coats on these ceilings in here. Now I've just covered up the floor um, because we're going to have the tiles be put in here. Now we're going to be sanding these ceilings. Now the reason we're sanding the ceilings, which is basically unheard of, is because we're going to be using a higher quality paint. So we would really like to see them nice and smooth, same as how we would treat the walls. Uh, now we're going to be using a, we're going to be sanding these with a 180 uh, no fill sandpaper um, and that's how I, it's just your normal sanding pole.
is my setup here. Got the old Wagner 3.21, the Pro Spray, and then the wash and wear. What I've decided to use is a 300 long, uh, I think this is about a 12 mil, it's a worn out 12 mil lambs will roll a sleeve in the Juggernaut 300 mil frame, steel frame. Now for the tip, the tip I've decided to use is a low pressure 213 tip, it's a green one. Now it's fairly worn out this tip, um, so it's actually quite nice for the ceiling. And that's basically, I've just done that one. Now remember this was the grey pebble quarter undercoat that's on here when I undercoated the walls. So we're just going to show you how I do about doing this. Hopefully I won't get too much paint on my gun. Now one of the very, very important things when you're doing um, shiny ceilings, whether you use gloss, low sheen, satin, anything like that for wet areas, crisscross. Um, always finish towards the lights. Now the main light source, we'll have a look when we finish, but uh, it'll be a little different. Now, we actually go the opposite. So let's say that uh, my main light source is here. So I'll finish off in that direction. But for my second coat now, because um, I've got three coats to go on, um, or one, two, and then another one, once this dries, is the opposite direction. So uh, we're actually painting it the wrong way this time, and we will make it the right way next time. Okay, you understand what I'm getting at? Because what happens is you'll actually see roller lines if you roll it the wrong way. Right, so I am going to spray it this way, and then I'm going to roll it this way. Now using a low pressure, I'm not getting much paint up there. I'm not getting much overspray. Once again, I want to force it in. And we're going to roll it in the opposite direction that we would finish it off in. Go this way, and our next coat will be the opposite way towards the light. Now, the good thing about these roller frames, um, these juggernaut roller frames, are steel roller frames. Bit of a pain to use, but look how close you can get to something with it. You see, it doesn't have, and same as on this side here. So it'll actually wear the roller sleeve nice and straight. Um, you're pushing right in the center. It's made of steel, and we don't get the fat edges on the side like we do with the normal roller frames. Um, but... Now, I can't tell you what PSI I'm spraying it at um, because I can change. I'm just a roughie, trust me, I'm roughy. It would only be really that important, uh, your perfect PSI, if you were spray finishing it. Um, if you're spray finishing it, you would have to have a, you would put a board up here and test some spray patterns at different um, pressures. Me, I'm in, I'm in too big a rush for that. I don't um, go with that rubbish. Um, I'll only use that, do that when I'm doing a final coat on doors or something like that. Um, I can just tell on the walls, you know, and because I back roll everything, um, you know, the lines don't bloody matter because they just get rolled out. I don't even see it, but that's the pressure I'm running now. We might even go a little higher, you know. Now we don't want to start and stop in a corner because that's where it'll run. So we'll start here for example and work our way around and we'll finish there because that way we're still moving. Um, whereas in the corner you have to stop. Start halfway. Start moving. Now some tips I would like to put out a lot more paint. 
and you might have to go faster. Now if I stopped in this corner, I'd probably have a run there. So that's how I'd finish that off. I'll just do this same one in here, same thing. Right, yeah, then, then we'll um, do the, the actual thing. Now that's the biggest light source, so we'll finish rolling this way. So we have to spray, we have to roll and spray this direction for our first coat. Now if we had plenty of time up our hands, um, we could just leave that like that for the first coat and then roll finish the, the final coat. But by rolling it actually makes it dry quicker, spreads the paint out nice and even. So I would rather do that. And once again, that's the light source, alright? So, and we're going to roll and spray our first coat in this direction. in here maybe that one there so we'll go this direction then we'll finish it off in that direction doesn't have to be very good. So all your amateurs, you're better off back rolling. I'm only an amateur as well. So that's the first coat. You can see it's quite shiny. Now we're not going to open any windows. Hopefully it'll dry in the next, you know, two hours. And I've got other stuff that I need to do, so I'm going to do that. And then I'll, um, I might show you the final coat. I'll actually show you the final finish on the next coat. But that's it, that's how you do them, so. Thanks for dropping by. And uh, hopefully that's another helpful tip from the painter when you're doing your wet area ceilings. Catch you later, bye. So 
there you go, that's how you do your wet area sealings. Um, hopefully you've learned something about this. Um, I'm sure that you're doing some wet area sealings at home by yourself and you want to have the best quality you can get. Uh, remember your roll is important. Uh, first coat is against the light and the other one is with the light. All right, so very important things to get a nice finish um, because you will be able to see every single line when that paint dries, a shiny paint dries. I'm just going to be wrapping this up in plastic for the next couple of hours while that dries. Um, with yourself, you could just, you know, you just do it the next day. But I'm, um, I'm just going to leave all my spray gun as it is. And I've got other stuff to go and do. I'll show you a video of the finished product. Hopefully that's helped you. Another helpful tip from the painter. Bye. Stay safe.